Hi folks, welcome to my channel. In today's video I'm doing an art supplies haul, but before I start I'd probably better explain that I've been a bit poorly over the last week, so I apologise in advance for my croaky throat. Do feel free to mute the volume and just watch the video in peace, but hopefully I'll be back to normal again soon. If you're new around here and you're curious as to what I'll be doing with these art supplies in future videos, please consider subscribing and hit the bell icon as well, so you get notified when I upload a new art video. It's also worth mentioning that all the art supplies in today's video are supplies I have bought myself with my own money, so this video is not sponsored. So let's jump in with the first of today's supplies, which is the Clairefontaine pastel matte paper. This is a trial pack of 7 sheets measuring 25 by 35 centimeters and comes in 7 different light colors. Now I've not used pastel matte paper before, but I've heard lots of good things and I'm really keen to test it out. So this 7 sheet pack of paper cost me £15.49 on Amazon in the UK, so it's not cheap, but this might vary some depending on where you live. Now unfortunately as you can see, despite being wrapped in a cellophane bag, the cardboard envelope it came in got pretty wet as it was delivered on a typically rainy day here in Sussex, but Clairefontaine does say that the paper keeps its original properties after being wet, so we'll have to wait and see. As for the paper surface, on the front it's pretty smooth with a slight texture, whilst on the back it's shiny a bit like card. If you buy this paper in a pad, each sheet is separated and protected by a sheet of crystal paper, which is a bit like greaseproof paper, but this wasn't the case in this 7 sheet trial pack. So the next art supply is the Canson XL Mixed Media Paper, which again seems to be quite a popular choice, and I thought it would be something I could use as a sketchbook for both wet and dry media. It measures 7 by 10 inches and has a weight of 160 grams, which is a lot less than my regular watercolour paper, so it will be interesting to test out. But for the £13.24 price tag, you do get 60 sheets of paper in a spiral band pad. There is also the benefit of a serrated edge which makes removing artwork easy. So next up are two really cheap plastic painting palettes that I bought from eBay. This first one cost just £2.04 and, and the second one cost £3.99 and was described as a small folding palette. I wasn't expecting too much from these palettes as they are quite cheap and cheerful but they do serve a purpose. I was looking to get in a small folding palette in particular, just so I can cover over any unused watercolour paint and store neatly for next time, without any dust or dirt getting in. Because it's very light, it would also be good to travel with. The smaller palette has two larger and seven smaller rectangular mixing areas, and I thought it would be handy to use alongside my sketchbook to try out watercolour swatches and that kind of thing. The next art supply is a size 4 Winsor & Newton Professional Watercolour Paintbrush. It's made of sable and has a pointed brush as opposed to my other watercolour brushes which are mainly round. It also has a nice shaped handle which means for better brush control. I'm trying to gradually build up my paintbrush collection and for me having a nice fine point to a paintbrush is really important for getting fine details on animals eyes and noses as well as for achieving fine hairs and fur detail. And being that it's made of sable bristles as opposed to synthetic ones, I'm hoping it will hold a nice lot of paint and water for extending painting time, as well as being able to absorb water well for techniques such as lifting paint. The current price of this paintbrush on Amazon UK is £9.10, but again prices and availability may vary depending on where you live. Now this next art supply is one that I'm really excited about. This is the Winsor & Newton Professional Watercolour Set containing 24 half pans and they come in a metal tin. This I managed to grab on eBay again and paid a total of £49, which included delivery. On Amazon UK at the moment I couldn't see the 24 half pan set but there is an 18 half pan set available for £39.95. I really like the look of the tin and when you open it up, you can see that there is a bit of information on the paints themselves and a list of the available colours. So 
So this sheet also contains useful information about which pigments are used in each colour, as well as a guide to the light fastness and transparency of the individual colours. The tin opens up to reveal two mixing areas and like many palettes of this style, you can also remove the pans to use the bottom section of the tin as another palette, or simply if you don't want to work within the tin itself. The range of colours seems okay at first glance, but it's hard to know what you've really got until you swatch them all out, and that's something I'll enjoy doing later. I'm currently in the process of putting together a colour swatch folder for my art supplies, so let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. I am planning on comparing these professional Winsor & Newton paints to the student grade Cotman range of half pans also by Winsor & Newton, so be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that video, which I'm aiming to upload next Tuesday. Moving on then, and this next supply may look a little strange unless you've seen them before. These are Chinese writing brushes used for calligraphy and painting. So lately I've been really enjoying watching and learning about the different styles of techniques of Chinese painting and decided to go ahead and buy a set since they weren't too expensive. This whole 10 piece set cost me $12.89 on Amazon UK and included the wrap case you see here. So this wrap unties to reveal the 10 brushes in the set. Now I'm not going to go into the description and size of each and every brush, but I will list this product along with all the others I've mentioned today in the description box below if you want to go and check them out for yourself. You can also slow down the time lapse section of this video by changing your settings in the YouTube settings, and then you can see the individual brushes as I look at them. Needless to say though, it does seem like there is a brush for every possible situation in this set. The brushes themselves seem to be made largely out of wolf hair or mixed animal hairs and are good for everything from line definition, big brush strokes as well as small details like tree stems and botanical paintings. I am really looking forward to experimenting with these brushes, but as I've never used them before, do let me know in the comments any hints or tips if you have used them or if you've got any experience with Chinese painting as it would really help me out. So the next art supply is a liquid watercolour medium by Winsor & Newton called Gum Arabic, which comes in this 75ml plastic bottle and I paid around £7 on Amazon UK for it. I've been curious to try different watercolour mediums and this one claims to increase transparency, brilliance and gloss which sounds amazing. It also is good for helping to control the spread of wet colour and slows the drying time of paint. This can also be diluted with water so I'm looking forward to experimenting a bit more with that in the near future. Right, next up is the Masters Brush Cleaner and Preserver, which was actually recommended by one of my subscribers during Inktober as a good product for cleaning ink for my brushes. And this stuff is super easy to use, super effective, and can care and preserve the life of your paint brushes. So in my opinion, it's well worth the £7.98 I paid for it. That price is though the UK price on Amazon, I do think you can get it cheaper on places like Jackson's Art Supplies or indeed if you try any other supplier. To use all you need to do is to run your brush under the tap to wet it first, rub it in a small amount of the paste and rinse well and that's it. So thank you for that recommendation, much appreciated, my brushes live on. Right, we're down to the last two art supplies now, but to describe them as art supplies might be pushing it a bit. This is an apron, and no, I don't normally make that much mess when I'm painting, but I stumbled across it on the Kath Kidson website whilst looking for a present for my niece, and it caught my eye, not because it's an apron, but because of the design, and it's covered in these paint tubes, which I really like. Do I need this? Well, you never know, and besides, it did have 50% off. So when the time comes that I might need an apron, like if I ever get round to trying oil paints, for example, then I'm ready. Right, so the last item I'm about to open is on a similar train of thought. It's not actually an art supply, but whilst waiting for paint to dry, or even when you're just giving your eyes a much needed rest from concentrating on the fine details of a painting. What do you do? 
Well, what do I do? I have a cup of tea. So this mug was right up my street and was also half price. So that's it for today, folks. I'm really looking forward to trying out these supplies. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And hopefully by the next one, my voice will be back to normal. Now, where's that honey and lemon?